Hello, everybody. Welcome. We are thrilled today to welcome back recurring guest Jessica Crowley of Copier Careers, who's here today to speak with us about current key trends in recruiting. Jessica, great to have you back today. Thanks, CJ. It's really great to have the opportunity to speak with you again. Awesome. Well, likewise, uh, likewise, my friend. And let's kick off the conversation talking about uh, some of the key strategies that we referred to in the recent Copier Careers Insights column that the Crowd Report and Copier Careers collaborated on. And the first and one of the key strategies was a good, solid comp plan. What are your thoughts as to what comprises a good, solid comp plan today? When it comes to, uh, you know, there's obviously various positions within an organization, but just kind of breaking it down to, uh, um, let's say, a sales position, um, candidates are looking for, a, you know, a base salary that's competitive with the area, um, and then also a clear commission structure and a clear quota to, to understand where their expectations are at, um, and then also the ability to have uncapped commissions. Um, because the more that they sell on a monthly basis gets them to a higher percentage of where they're going to be at for the quarter, and then therefore their bonus is going to be higher based on, typically based on, on the amount of revenue that they're able to, to bring in. Um, also, when it comes to a good comp plan for a sales rep, uh, if you're not able to give the candidate a book of business, some type of non-recoverable draw or a guarantee is going to be required for someone that is coming over from the industry in order to uh, leave their current current book of, book of business and then be attracted to go to the the new potential opportunity. Um, when, it, when you're looking at more on the technical end of it, um, competitive base salary, if there is a bonus program for technicians, um, making sure it's attainable. I think some of the, the programs out there, if, if they're not implemented accurately in, in their system, it could cause a technician not to be able to achieve those monthly or quarterly bonuses. So then the technicians get frustrated and then that causes them to look to make a move. So making sure that those are attainable um, and you can see if they're attainable by the number of technicians that are able to hit their, hit their monthly or quarterly goals. If the company doesn't have a bonus structure for technicians or service leadership or anything like that, just know that you're going to have to increase higher on your base salary because there is a good portion of, of dealers and some of the OEMs that compensate based off of, you know, additional commissions on a, or bonuses on a, on a monthly or quarterly basis. And then also on the technical end, because of, of driving company vehicles are, are so important to candidates now. Um, I would say nine times out of 10, if you ask nine technicians um, if they want a company vehicle or a car allowance, they'll say the, the company vehicle. And then for the one technician, they'll say, no, I like driving my own car. Um, and then just in general, I think for for anything, it's it's really about open communication with their higher direct manager um, being, you know, letting their voice really be heard. Um, and then the, the other thing outside of that would be the benefits. We're hearing more and more of companies um, allowing really good benefit programs. And so if, if a candidate is looking to leave and they, you know, explore an opportunity where they're going to pay, be paying significantly more out of pocket for premiums, they're not going to move. And I've actually had that happen to a, a couple, couple of candidates of mine um, in various parts of the U.S., not just in specific parts, but, you know, all over the place. And so that really is going to be a decision making factor for for individuals. What is typically your guidance or what would your guidance um, or talk track be with dealers with regard to overall comp plans within this industry as it, as they compare to other industries? Yeah, I think the the biggest difference on the sales end of it is is the base salary. Um, it it tends to be significantly higher in other industries, but on the flip side, so you know, unless you're going and competing against you know kind of big pharma and medical that where overall everything is is quite significantly higher. But if you're comparing parallel industries, telecom. 
um, you know, HR payroll system, software sales, you know, that type of thing. You, they are getting a higher base salary. They, it is often that they are either capped or the percentage of what they're going to be able to get is lower. So they could be making less by, you know, if you are comparing what at plan, a sales comp plan would be in the industry. So, and then on the technical end, um, it really does depend nine times out of 10, other industries are going to be going to be higher as well. Knowing that salaries tend to be lower in the industry, what's the deciding factor among most candidates when considering or accepting an offer from a dealer? It's the 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 commission piece of it and the and the bonus opportunities are significantly higher. And I think that's what would attract uh, a candidate to consider either re-entering the industry or consider entering into the industry from the start. So it's it's not just about the comp plan. It's also what is the role, how attainable is the quota, you know, what are the steps for training and you know what are what is your team doing right now? Are they achieving it? Or are you just telling me this is what it is? And then no one's ever able to get to that level. One thing that I have noticed, and we have been noticing over the past few years, the typically the, the lower cost of living in comparison to like the Northeast, DC, Northern Virginia, California, those markets, because people are moving away from those markets and moving to areas like the Carolinas, Florida, Texas, um, Idaho um, and Montana, what we've been seeing because the demand for housing is shrinking is is becoming so much more greater. Um, the uh, you know housing has increased, rent has increased, and and actually just the the number of our properties available have shrunk. So therefore, um, the the prices have increased, but companies need to, and some of them have reflected on that and have adjusted, noticing that they need to increase their compensation for their current employees as well as anyone coming in because they know that the, the cost of living is, is becoming significantly higher. What do you consider <laughs> to be some of the key central perks in demand? You know, one of the, the biggest perks that has become more and more relevant in our industry is, is having more of a work-life balance. Um, you know, the younger generation is really kind of forcing that on, on every single industry. It's not just us. Yep. And so, you know, if you're, if you're a hiring manager, you really want to evaluate where is my, where is my team at? Where, you know, where do I need to improve? And, you know, what value can this, this younger generation bring to, to my team versus I've done it this way for the past, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, and we're not going to change. If, if that mindset is still going to be the same place, if you're still going to have the same comp plan, if you're still going to have the same training style and, and program in place, you're always going to have, you're, you're not going to get the retention that you really are looking for. Um, the, uh, you know, and it's not to say that that candidates are just going to, you know, go ahead and take, you know, five weeks off at a time. It's, it's more so them knowing that they have the ability and that you trust them that they can manage their zone manage their time manage their 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 territory in order to to bring value to you to you when they are actively working um and that kind of ties into another perk that i know is is really valid not you know in any position whether it's service sales you know administration leadership is is autonomy um, you know, if you're looking at a sales rep and you want to give them, you know, hey, go build me this this book of business, go build out this territory, you want them to really treat it like their own company and they're running their own business. And if all you're doing is is asking them, how many calls did you make today? How many things, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or if you're asking them to report into the office on a daily basis, it, it really is about the culture that you want to create for the organization. If that has worked for you in the past of, of doing that, then continue to do so. But I think the number one thing that if you ask any dealer right now, if it's not the number one, it's in the top 
probably three things that has caused them to, uh, you know, owners and hiring managers, you know, to stay up at night is the fact that not only is it hard to find people, but what is it going to take for them to retain the people that they already have? I guess one of my big takeaways is we're not encouraging dealers with strong brand identities to change that, but to mm -hmm. just be open to considering what their needs are in terms of prospective employees and what that pool of desirable candidates mm -hmm. are going to be demanding and looking for. That's exactly it. I'm definitely not saying that you have to change everything about your <laughs> your process when it comes to who you're going after and, and what you're looking for in the expectations. It's just more about being open and, and knowing that going into the interview process, knowing who you're talking to, whether you're talking to someone that's, you know, a couple of years of B2B experience or a couple of years of, of a field technician or someone 10, 20 years in the industry and a vet, really adjusting to what is going to make sense for that individual. And then collectively as a team, they will just learn and, and be cohesive in, in really finding the ultimate goal, which is to be successful in the position. But Jessica, I certainly think it's, it's fair to say we covered quite a bit. What are the most important takeaways that dealers uh, could perhaps easily remember when, we, when they depart from watching this? I think the the key takeaways are going to be, you know, openness, openness to communication, openness to uh, evaluating where they're at, where their team is at, and what they're looking for in a candidate, and openness to to having conversations with any type of candidate out there, not just the, you know, I need a ten out of a ten, you know, for for what I'm looking for in this individual. There are so many candidates, if they are willing to have a conversation, you have to have a conversation with them. Jessica, thank you as always. It's uh, such a pleasure having you with us. Um, uh, really enjoyed speaking with you today. And uh, for those of you out there in the audience, thanks for watching. Also, if uh, you haven't read it and you're looking for more information on this topic, please do check out the most recent Copier Careers Insights uh, column that uh, the Conrad Report and Copier Careers collaborated on. Um, if you like what you saw today, please give us a thumbs up and like us on YouTube. And with that, have a great day and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.